cartilage is a type of connective tissue. And you've probably heard of cartilage. You've probably heard of cartilage being in your nose and in your joints. But there's actually three types of cartilage in the body. By far the most abundant type of cartilage is known as hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage, the, the hyaline component of that, means glassy because the extracellular material is very, very shiny and kind of bluish white. The ground substance in, connective, in cartilage contains kind of a, a gel-like material as well as collagen and cells that are producing the cartilage. So what we see here is hyaline cartilage under the microscope. The solid kind of reddish color is stained cartilage. The solid red color is the really fine collagen fibers that you can't really see except a solid stain. Scattered within this material are chondrocytes. Chondro means cartilage, so these are cartilage cells. The cartilage cells are sitting in little structures called lacunae. The lacunae, or a lacuna, is kind of like the little house that the cell resides in. So it's a structure that contains the chondrocyte. So, hyaline cartilage is the most abundant cartilage in the body. It's found in numerous different locations. One location is at the ends of long bones, so it protects the ends of bones that form joints. So this is the cartilage you would probably be talking about if you were talking about joints, like the shoulder, or the knee, or the hip, or your elbow. Those joints where those bones come together, they're covered with hyaline cartilage. You find a lot of it used to attach ribs to your sternum. So this cartilage gives the thoracic cage some strength, but also some flexibility. You find quite a bit of it in your respiratory tract, your nose, parts of your larynx or voice box. Your trachea has cartilaginous rings to it. Bronchi, bronchial tubes, all have cartilage. The cartilage in your respiratory tract makes sure that that tract is open all the time. You do not want the respiratory tract to close. The final location where you would find this is embryonic and fetal bones. That's what this picture shows. This picture shows a fetus developing inside of the womb. These look like bones, they look like ribs, but they're actually made out of cartilage first. The hyaline cartilage forms kind of a model of the bone. And then as the fetus develops, the cartilage gets converted over into bone tissue. So a lot of places to find this cartilage and a lot of fu different functions. It can provide a smooth surface at joints for bones when they rub against one another. It gives flexibility but strength. So it's, it's not as strong as bone but pretty close. But the advantage of having cartilage over bone is it provides some flexibility. It's very supportive uh, and it, of the three cartilages, it has been known to fracture. In fact, when someone breaks their nose, it's usually a cartilage fracture and not bone. So this is hyaline cartilage. The next cartilage is the strongest of the three. It's called fibrocartilage. And it's called fibrocartilage because it looks more fibrous. You can actually see the collagen fibers throughout the, the matrix. So the collagen is thicker, and you can see it. And with thicker collagen, you have a stronger cartilage. So this cartilage is found in a number of different locations. There's a joint that holds your hips together in the front called the pubic symphysis. Your intervertebral discs 
that separate the vertebrae in your backbone and provides a lot of strength are made up of fibrocartilage. You may have heard of a meniscus or menisci of the knee. Those are pads in between your femur and tibia. Those pads are made up of fibrocartilage. So this stuff is really strong and it gives a little bit of uh, flexibility, a little bit of cushioning, uh, and it helps quite often helps hold bones together. The third cartilage is called elastic cartilage, is in, and the name suggests that it's more flexible than the other two. So it has a, a larger amount of elastic fibers within its matrix. And these are all little elastic fibers scattered throughout the matrix. Still has chondrocytes, just like the other two cartilages. The chondrocytes are inside structures called lacunae, just like the other two cartilages. This one just haps, happens to be the most flexible. Two really important locations. One is the epiglottis, which is a lid on top of your larynx. This epiglottis closes off the larynx when you swallow. So food or liquid cannot get into your respiratory tract. So it prevents that whole going down the wrong tube phenomenon that could happen. The next location you can find this is in the oracle of the ear. The oracle of the ear is this external part of your ear. It's what you think of when you, someone says ear, that part that you see. There's more to an ear than the oracle. There's the middle ear and the inner ear. But that outer kind of funnel that helps transport sound waves into the ear is made up of elastic cartilage. So it su su provides some strength, but most importantly, it gives more elasticity to the structure. Okay, we're going to go quickly through bone because bone is a whole system that we're going to get to, the skeletal system. But bone is a connective tissue. There's actually two types of bone tissue. One is known as compact bone tissue. It's a lot stronger, more compact. It's made up of these cylindrical units called osteons. So if you look at this, this is a picture of connect, uh, compact bone. You can make out some cylinders in here, kind of these round layered structures. Those are the osteons in compact bone. Inside compact bone you'd find bone cells. They're called osteocytes. A lot of times those osteocytes also, like cartilage, are sitting in little structures called a lacuna. And this compact bone tissue is more superficial in a bone. So it forms more of the outer bone tissue. On the inside of a bone, you would find more of what's called spongy bone. Spongy bone has more little branches to it. It kind of looks as if you were to cut through a, a sponge. You would see little pockets, and those little pockets are filled with bone marrow. So bone marrow is protected by spongy bone on the inside of many of our bones. So bone tissue, also known as osseous tissue, comes in two types, compact and spongy. The last connective tissue we're going to discuss is liquid, blood. Uh, lymph is also connective tissue. We're not going to talk too much about lymph, but blood is a liquid connective tissue. Nothing else looks like blood, so when you see a picture of blood, I would really hope you get it right because you're going to see red blood cells that appear red and smaller than the white blood cells, which appear purple. So why would a white blood cell look purple? Uh, that's because we have stained blood. You wouldn't be able to see white blood cells if you didn't use some sort of a staining procedure. So blood is going to have liquid called blood plasma, 
and then it's going to have formed elements, which include your red blood cells, or erythrocytes, your white blood cells, or leukocytes, and your platelets, known as thrombocytes. And a platelet is going to look just like a little itty-bitty fragment inside of the blood. They're very, very small. And I think we know the function of our blood is transportation. Transports oxygen, carbon dioxide, it transports cells and hormones. But we'll, we'll work a lot more on blood when we get to the cardiovascular system in AMP2. Okay, the final lecture is going to cover muscle. And there's three types of muscle. And then finish up by discussing nervous tissue.